Good morning, ESM. I'm Anthony, and uh, with me is Colin. Uh, so you have your phone out during the show. What could be possibly more important than our show right now? I'm just posting on my stop story it's so that my f uh, friends can see what I'm doing. Wow, Colin. How long can you go without using your phone? Uh, I'm not really sure. I've never really checked that much, but I could probably go for a while. I don't know. It sounds like you have a, an addiction to your phone. According to Media Kicks, 210 pe million people suffer from social media addiction. Wow, that's a big problem. We'll talk more about that after our top stories with Maddie. A video of Syracuse police officers arresting an 18-year-old boy, an 8-year-old boy has gone viral. Kenneth Jackson, a witness on the scene, recorded the interaction between him and the officers. Jackson approached the officers with the crying boy and asked what happened. One of them replied with he was stealing stuff. Jackson caught the off cut the off cut off the officer and responded with, nah man, so he's stealing a bag of chips and you're treating him like a cold killer. The video then leads into intense swearing, name calling, and yelling between the officers and Jackson, followed by the eight-year-old boy being put into the police car and to be directed home. Mayor Ben Walsh responded to the incident publicly. He said the officer knew the child from prior interactions and explained to him that he was being taken home. The officers returned the child to his family and discussed the incident with his father before leaving without filing any charges. What occurred demonstrates the continuing need for the city to provide support to our children and families and to invest in an alternative response is options to assist our officers. Many people have different opinions on whether the officers were being too harsh or if they were just simply doing their job. Yesterday, the Florida Senate passed a bill that would dissolve the special taxing district that allows the Walt Disney Company to self-govern in its theme park area. The legislation would dismantle Disney's special district on June 1st, 2023. The special stations granted by state law in 1967 allows Disney to self-govern by collecting taxes and providing emergency services. The effort to eliminate the Reedy Creek Improvement District comes after DeSantis began tar targeting the corporation over its leaders' criticisms of the so-called Don't Say Gay Bill, which would prevent classroom discussions of gender identity and sexual orientation in kindergarten through the third grade. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It seems that in today's society, social media controls everything, including us. According to Statista.com, 89% of undergraduate students experience phantom vibrations, perception of vibrations from a device that isn't vibrating. We've become so addicted to our phones, we, we imagine messages that aren't even there. 60% of adults in the U.S. use YouTube and more than twice a day, and 54% use TikTok more than twice a day. Switching over to teens, the number one used app is Snapchat, followed by TikTok and Instagram. It's alarming that the average teen spends over four hours a day on Snapchat. It's scary looking, all th looking at all of these statistics, and it's even more scary looking at the mental health effects like anxiety and depression that stem from media usage. Ms. Montroy, our school social worker, does notice some issues with social media. Very uh, focused on social media and sometimes it's uh, to a detriment to them because they're not paying attention to other things that are really important in their lives, which could be sports, could be their academics, could be spending time with family and people that are important to them. Uh, today we will have, it's going to be windy at times, some occasional rain. Today we were going to have a high of 57 and a low of 41.
and tomorrow we're gonna have a high of 56 and a low of 36. And I'm Abby with your weather. Not all social media is bad. Mr. Ward sees a lot of benefits. Of it, because I think one thing that social media does really, really well is it helps to democratize not just our information, but also our friendships. And I'm thinking specifically right now, like in Ukraine, right? We watched Russia try to shut the internet down. And then as the internet was brought back by private companies, it allows people to communicate, to socialize, to share their stories and to feel heard and understood. And I know that there's detractors and that it also has negative aspects, but dude, can we just like shout out social media right now for bringing us together and letting us actually tell our stories with the audience that we're able to build? How dope is that? We've been able to build a sense of community through Facebook and Instagram groups and make others laugh through sending memes and jokes online. Another positive is that social media entertains us when we're bored, especially with apps like TikTok. Mr. Clonan, ESM Athletic Director, shares game updates and scores and sees some positives with social media. I think it's a, uh, a great communication device. Um, it's a great place to find information in real time. Um, I just would caution um, teenagers to use it in moderation and use it what it's intended for um, and not get so caught up in the uh, keeping up with the Joneses, if you will. Many teenagers also have been able to make quite a living as an influencer. If you have one million or more followers on TikTok, you can get paid $1,000 to $5,000 a month. One of our own students' brothers here at ESM has 4.7 million follow followers and is TikTok famous. Take it off. <laughs> this guy, huh? Why don't you come and meet? Six student athletes had their signing yesterday. Ariana Finkelstein and Kevin Hasty are both going to the College of Staten Island for track. Rocky L will be going to Stony Brook for football. Michael Parks is going to the University of Buffalo for track. Natalie Quans is going to, to Canisius College and for softball. And Kate Cox is going to Edmondsboro for soccer. Boys tennis had a match at home at Auburn at 4.30. Boys baseball has a game at home against Central Square at 4.45. Girls softball plays at home against Oswego at 5. Girls lacrosse plays home against Oswego at 6.45. And boys lacrosse plays at Oswego at 7. So in summary, just like everything else, social media has some bad and good qualities, but there are mostly good qualities. And on that note, from Colin and I, and everyone else here at The Morning Show, have, have a, a spectacular, spectacular day. day.